Next I'm going to try to uh, remove the seal from the bearing so we can repack the bearing with uh, new grease. So I have a sharp pry tool, sharp tip. I put it between the inner race and the bearing seal very carefully. Just to lift it up enough so I can place a non-sharp object in there like this uh, screwdriver. There we go. That's the seal. And we'll do the same at the other side. This bearing is made by SKF. It is the BB1-3793. And a lot of people say that this is a hybrid ceramic bearing, meaning that the balls are ceramic and the inner and the outer race are metal. So let's see if that's true. So let's measure the conductivity of the ball and there is no beep meaning that the balls do not conduct electricity so yeah they are ceramic so this is a hybrid ceramic bearing verified I removed the grease that was on the seal the amount of grease that I got out is roughly 10 by 10 by 5 millimeters and that seems to be about all the grease that's in there maybe there's more on the the back seal I don't want to get the back seal out because it's really hard to reach and I'm afraid of damage I already damaged the front seal um, it's a seal that has a, a rubberish or elastomer front and a, a steel back. It's magnetic. I think it's steel. It's, it's metal in any case. Uh, there were little tears in it and I bent the steel a little bit. It's, it's very minor, so I'm planning to put it back. I glued the little cracks with a liquid electrical tape um, because it sticks to everything and it doesn't come off easily. Um, I hope I'm going to let it dry and uh, see uh, how well it adheres. Also note that the distance between the inside surface of this seal and the balls is very large. So even if there's a little bit of play and so on, or if you put electrical tape, liquid electrical tape on the inside, there's still no way that the balls are going to touch uh, the seal. On this side of the motor, I also removed the uh, seal. It looks like this. It looks like the uh, grease has, um, yeah, granulated a little bit like little particles of sand it looks like and has to be cleaned I think and replaced so after removing the front seal we can remove the back seal now the seal is uh, on the outside it's rubber and on the inside it is actually a metal sheet material so I just pushed the two metal screwdrivers uh, between the balls against the metal face of the seal and then I just uh, pushed it out like that uh, first I tried it with the uh, plastic pieces but uh, they are too flexible and they broke next take a q-tip and some acetone uh, acetone is good for the metal inner rays outer rays no damage will occur also chemical compatibility between the balls and acetone is fine no damage and then uh, the plastic between the balls is uh, nylon or in some cases even PEEK, which is very expensive plastic, uh, and uh, both of them uh, are good with acetone, no damage. And so, but you have to be careful, this rubber cannot withstand acetone when it's really soaked in it. Now, acetone will evaporate pretty quick, so maybe for a short time you can clean it, but uh, don't soak this in the acetone. Accidentally, while I was cleaning, I pushed uh, not even hard, and uh, the cage came out. So, look at this. So be very careful, it's ceramic balls. Uh, you don't want it to drop on the ground because I don't know if it will chip off or something like that. So if they fall out, uh, keep them contained so they cannot roll off the table. But uh, now we can take it apart completely. I didn't know it was so easy and uh, clean it even more thoroughly. Fortunately, they just stay in. Uh, doesn't matter if you move them all together. Uh, they just stay between the inner and the outer rays cannot be taken out until unless you provide a lot of force but I'm not going to do that I don't want to have to reassemble this again also for the the last detail you can uh, grab tweezers and a piece of cloth and then you can go in all the tiny corners to clean it now you could ask yourself why am I leaving these bearings on the rotor you could simply say yeah just pull the bearings off 
but with a normal bearing puller you put on the outer race and then uh, the balls uh, can get damaged so generally you should use a new bearing after that so ideally you have to use a bearing uh, pusher that pushes the bearing uh, against uh, the inner race like so it pushes it somewhere over there uh, difficult to see but there's only a very small surface area where you can push the bearing so you have to have a bearing pusher that's exactly right for that only yeah, also we don't have much space between the, the bearing face and the, the rotor face over here so uh, I don't have that uh, kind of tools so uh, that's why I decided to go this strategy you can also say pull these off and buy new ones problem is here in California they are 400 US dollar each so for the pair that would be 800 dollar I rather preserve them and uh, first I wanted to just put this rotor back in the housing without doing anything about the grease and a good friend of mine who has a lot of experience with uh, rebuilding engines and whatnot said no no you have to repack it with uh, fresh grease because the old grease has been flushed out by the coolant leak on the other side or here contaminated with the uh, transmission flu fluid and whatnot so we have to find a, a proper grease next you can also say just buy it off aliexpress for 20 bucks it's also an skf brand same brand same quality you expect but there's a lot of counterfeit, you don't know the quality, so the bearing just may fail after a couple hours and then your motor seizes up and you got a whole bunch bigger problems. Both bearings on the rotor are made by SKF and they're model BB13793 hybrid ceramic bearings. I made a detailed uh, 3D CAT model of the SKF bearing, rotor bearing and it shows that the free volume is 6.5 milliliter. Now we have to choose a fill fraction. So wh which fraction of that free volume are we going to fill with grease? For normal bearings, you would pack it 100%, but we are running a high speed bearing here and both SKF, but more explicitly plantengineering.com says, uh, put less than 30% grease in there. So it can be anywhere between zero and 30. So I was like, okay, let's go halfway 15 which amounts to one milliliter of grease. So if we chose that, let's compare it to what we pulled out of the uh, bearing the old grease, and that was a half a milliliter. Now that for sure was not all the grease that has been in there. Part had been flushed out by the um, Dextron 6 or the gearbox fluid, um, and part was uh, between the, um, the cage, and I, I didn't collect all that. So one milliliter is double the amount I collected from the bearing which seems a reasonable amount so we're going to move forward with this number you can spend an entire episode on grease selection here i highlight just a few properties of the chosen grease i chose an skf grease because it's an skf bearing so that felt a bit safer see also the skf website for more guidance and information Note that this is a polyurea based grease, which may not be compatible with the old grease, meaning it can react, uh, resulting into hard particles. So clean the bearing first. Also, there's a speed limit. And if this is not enough for you, consider the LGLT2 grease. That grease has a lower viscosity. So next we take a syringe like this. And you can measure the interior diameter and then uh, you can calculate and then say how far you have to uh, use it so we are going to put some uh, grease in it so uh, just take the grease out of it and then uh, yeah, put it in there So there I just go to the to the first uh, marking then I uh, inject in the first bearing until there and the second bearing until there. Now I'm going to apply the grease to the bearing. Uh, I could inject it directly but uh, I would probably hit the cage and maybe it then sticks to the cage and not enough goes between the races and the balls. So I decided just to dispense it like this on a little screwdriver and I'll just uh, smear it uh, onto the inner race between each pair of balls and after that I do the same I apply it to the outer race so 
So the bearing has been repacked, look like this. So now we're going to put the seals back on. So there we go. Clicks right in place. And check if the seal is completely clicked in place before we start to rotate the bearing. Otherwise, the, the grease may uh, go out. And now we can rotate the bearing. need some running in at low rpm so the second bearing has been repacked look like this so we're going to also put the seals back in place all right I push the seals back in we can start to turn it. And it starts to go smoother already. All right. Well, that's done. That's done. So I have a lot of this SKF Grease LGHP2 left. In your region, this may not be readily available, so. I'm willing to sell small portions of this to you uh, for this look at the text below the video.